Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to the July 2023 CT is Us quiz. I have 10 terrific cases for you, so let's get started. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with elevated LFTs is, well, what do I see? I see a mass in the left lobe of the liver. It's a little better seen on the venous than the arterial phase. It's slightly vascular, but not very vascular. It looks like it involves the left portal vein, but there's no duct dilatation, and it's a solitary mass. So if I look at this uh, on the choices, it could be a primary tumor, hepatoma, cholangiocarcinoma. It's surely not a hemangioma. This is not the appearance of hemangioma. And if this was hepatic adenoma, it would be a hepatic adenoma that became a malignancy. Now, hepatomas are usually in cirrhotic livers. This liver is not cirrhotic. Also, hepatomas are usually hypervascular, and this lesion is not hypervascular. So if you asked me, hypovascular primary mass in the liver, maybe some a little bit of a capsular retraction, what's the best bet? Cholangiocarcinoma. And the answer here is cholangiocarcinoma. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with back pain is, well, what are we looking at? We're looking at a CTA of the uh, chest and a CTA in the head and neck region. So what are we looking at? The first thing you notice is, well, when I give you the choices, we're thinking about some sort of vasculitis. Now, Takayashi's aortitis, large vessel disease, most common vessel involved is going to be the left subclavian. SAM, typically we're going to see involvement of the SMA or other mesenteric vessels. Kawasaki's disease, we typically think about the coronary arteries and coronary artery calcification. And Ernheim-Chester disease can give you large or small vessel disease, but you also see infiltration around the kidneys and maybe around the aorta. So the most likely diagnosis here with involvement and absence of the patient's uh, left subclavian artery, stenosis in other areas, the best answer is going to be Takayashi's aortitis. This incidental pancreatic mass is least likely to represent. So what is this not? Well, when we look on the axials and on the coronals, we see a hypovascular mass in the region of head of pancreas, and there does appear to be pancreatic duct dilatation. Now, this could be an adenocarcinoma, and that's probably the likely diagnosis normally. It could be an IPMN, but if it's an IPM, I surely would worry that it's become malignant. We can see schwannomas, and occasionally we have seen low-density masses, pancreatic head, looking almost like carcinoma being schwannomas. So that's a rare but a possibility. The least likely is going to be a neuroendocrine tumor. And although neuroendocrine tumors can be small and obstruct the pancreatic duct, and occasionally they're hypovascular, and commonly they calcify, they rarely are hypodense. They're usually hypervascular. So if I had to say what's the least likely, I'm going with a neuroendocrine tumor. The most likely diagnosis in this 45-year-old female. Well, what do I see? I see a cystic lesion by the tail of the pancreas, and I notice the septations. Could it be a serous cyst adenoma? I guess it could be with a thin septation. It's not going to be an IPMN. I don't see a dilated pancreatic duct. Spend tumors can be cystic, but usually they're cystic and solid, and usually the patients in their teens or 20s. The classic tumor of a patient in their 40s up to 50, they're female, cystic with thick septation is going to be an MCN. Recent articles suggest that MCNs over 4CM or with very thick inceptations are likely going to be either malignant or pre-malignant. The most likely diagnosis in this 50-ish year old male is, huh, great question. You see a cystic lesion in the body of the pancreas. It looks like it has some septations. Doesn't look like an IPMN. MCN, typically it's cystic, thin septations, not this 
multiple septations, and MCNs are more likely females rather than males. Spend tumors can be cystic or solid, but again, it's usually female and it's much younger. What this is going to be is one of the varying appearances of serous cyst adenoma. Serous cyst adenomas can be cystic with central stellate calcification. They can have small cysts or big cysts. And often I will notice that the cystic component is best seen on venous phase imaging. On arterial phase, you're concerned often with the neuroendocrine tumor, but it's the, the venous phase that really brings out those cystic changes. So this was a serous cyst adenoma. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, I see a mass in the mesentery. It's adjacent to the SMA. It's somewhat cystic. Carcinoid tumors can occur in this region, though usually they're more distal, but they're vascular or solid. Adenocarcinoma tends to be infiltrating. Just tumors are exophytic arising out of small bowel. This is really adjacent to the bowel. When I see a mass adjacent to bowel and adjacent to vessels, I think of nodes. I think of things like lymphoma, metastatic melanoma. I would consider carcinoid as well, except for the fact there's no desmoplastic reaction. There's none of the vascularity I like to see. And so the most likely diagnosis in this case was lymphoma. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, I see and I'm looking at the gallbladder. And the gallbladder looks like it has some sludge and layering, but more immediately there's a solid component, and that solid component is also well visualized on the coronal view. This is not a simple case of gallstones. It's not a biliary cancer. I don't see biliary duct dilatation, and the pancreas looks okay. This is a gallbladder cancer. Gallbladder cancer is common in older patients, 60s, 70s, 80s, more common in female, more common in patients with stones or prior cholecystitis, but it can be a great mimicker. Sometimes patients present with jaundice because the tumor spreads to the porta hepatis and obstructs the ducts. Other times, it's just an eccentric mass in the gallbladder. Again, nodes are common in the portal cable space, which explains why at times it can simulate a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with hematuria is, well, the first thing we notice is the right kidney looks pretty good, but the left kidney is obstructed. Then when you look carefully, you see a dilated ureter on the sagittal view, and you see very distally in the ureter, there's soft tissue. That's not a stone. That's going to be an infiltrating process. That's going to be a transitional cell carcinoma. So this is not a renal mass, it's a ureter mass, and a very nice example of a TCC of the ureter. In this patient with chest and back pain, the most likely diagnosis is, well, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at an aortic aneurysm, or it looks like an aneurysm, but then you see the increased soft tissue surrounding the aorta, and particularly nicely shown on the sagittal view. You don't see a flap. This is not your typical dissection, be it A or B. Obviously, it's not A because the ascending aorta looks good. It's not giant cell vasculitis. What this is, is an intramural hematoma. A beautiful example of an intramural hematoma. At times, if you did non-contrast, they're a bit easier to see because they're high attenuation. The most likely diagnosis for this posterior metastinal mass is... I will admit on the arterial phase images on your left, you can go through a differential diagnosis of a soft tissue mass. Remember, we always say be careful when you have arterial phase imaging, particularly in a cirrhotic liver. Of course, you really don't see much of the liver here, but when you look at the venous phase or the image on the right, you see where we're looking at a large varices. This is not esophageal cancer. It's not lymphoma. It's not extramedullary hematopoiesis. It's para-esophageal, it's para-aortic masses that are lobulated, that enhance a classic example of esophageal varices. Well, with that, I've done 10 terrific cases. I hope you got them all right, or more importantly, I hope you learned something and some good lessons from these cases, and I hope to see you next month. 
Have a great day, everybody. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.